Hi, I'm Caleb Giddings from Gun Nuts Media, and today's video is the first in a series that I'm going to do about bad self-defense cliches. For whatever reason, the self-defense industry or community is full of terrible cliches, sayings that are repeated over and over again that people think are good advice and could in reality end up getting you in serious legal trouble or killed. Today we're going to take a look at one of my least favorite self-defense cliches, and that's, I was in fear for my life. You hear this one a lot. Go on any self-defense forum, any gun forum, talk to people who have been around the self-defense community, and they'll say that all you need to say is, I was in fear for my life. If you're in a self-defense shooting, I was in fear for my life. If you shoot someone breaking into your home, I was in fear for my life. It's taken on this life where it's treated like it is some sort of magical cure-all for how to avoid legal trouble if you have to use your gun or really any sort of force in self-defense. Just say, well, officer, I was in fear for my life. That's not how this works. It's never worked like that, and it's never, ever going to work like that. The problem with this idea of just being able to say, I was in fear for my life, being afraid doesn't legally justify you to shoot someone. It doesn't. Nowhere in any reasonable use of force policy does it just say you have to be afraid that you might get killed. I'm afraid that I might get killed every day because I live in Miami and I ride a motorcycle. I, I, I am legitimately in fear for my life sometimes. That doesn't mean I can just whip my gun out and start blasting other cars. That would be illegal, despite the fact that I am in fear for my life. So. Where did this cliché come from? I don't know, honestly. I don't know. I have no idea who the first person was that said, I am in fear for my life, and used that as a justification for deadly force. My belief is that it comes from a misunderstanding of the totality of circumstances that you have to present when you're using force justifiably. So here's the idea. All right, and the idea behind the saying, I was in fear for my life, kind of starts off like this. It is used as the base of a justification to employ deadly force against someone who legitimately could kill you, right? So for deadly force to be justified, someone must have the ability, the opportunity, and the capability to kill you or to inflict grievous bodily harm on you. Saying, I was afraid for my life is sort of a neat little bow tied way of summing up that someone had ability, opportunity, and, excuse me, ability, opportunity, and intent. I messed it up earlier. But they have to have the ability, the opportunity, and the intent to kill you. And saying, I was in fear for my life could have started as a handy colloquialism to explain that the person that you use deadly force against had ability, uh, opportunity, and intent to kill you, or do grievous bodily harm, or kidnap you, or do something else that would justify deadly force. But the problem is, and I think it started around the uh, time of the Zimmerman shooting, it just sort of turned into a cliché where people on the internet would just toss out, well, he was in fear for his life, that's why he shot Martin. And I'm like, okay, cool, but how do you articulate that? How do you take, I was in fear for my life, and explain it in a way that demonstrates to a jury of reasonable people that the person had ability, opportunity, and intent? And that's the thing. When we... Uh, overuse these cliches when we make things too simple. We lose sight of the fact that a self-defense situation where you're using deadly force is a very legally complicated situation. 
And just because you win the gunfight or win the knife fight or the fist fight or whatever, that's really the beginning of your problems. There are tremendous social consequences and tremendous, obviously, legal consequences that come out from that. And so if your only justification for using deadly force is, I was afraid for my life, it's going to go a lot worse for you. It's a terrible cliche, and it's a terrible cliche because it oversimplifies the very complicated reasons that you must have and that you must use to be able to justify using deadly force. Let's take the extremely politically toxic George Zimmerman shooting, all right? If all you say is I was a, is that Zimmerman was afraid for his life, it doesn't that doesn't really justify him shooting Martin. Now, if you say that Martin had the ability to kill or grievously injure uh, George Zimmerman because he was a physically strong, athletic male, and he had the opportunity to use that ability because he had George Zimmerman in a full mount and was striking him in the face and the head with his head up against concrete. And if you say that he had the intent because he had him in a full mount and was punching him in the face and slamming his head into the concrete, that's articulable, all right? That's how you would articulate that. You can't just say, I'm afraid for my life, like that's a justification to shoot someone. It's not. You have to be able to articulate that they had the ability, the opportunity, and the intent in the totality of circumstances. You can't just say, I was afraid for my life. That's it for today's video about bad self-defense cliches. We'll be back next week with some more content. I'm Caleb Giddings. Thanks for watching, and remember, run your gun, not your mouth.